Hey everyone, my name is Abhay Rekar and I'm a software professional with around 4 years of experience and I'm creating a small playlist for Slide Nerd on Java collections and generics. I'll be uploading the complete playlist on my own channel along with a lot of other content. So do check out my channel as well. The link will be in the description below. Hey everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, I gave you an introduction to generics but we haven't seen how to implement them, right? So now we'll see how to use generics in Java. Now in the previous tutorial, we had a requirement where we had to write a class which helps us print data from an array. And for that, we wrote several classes to support different types of data. We've also learned that generics allow us to parameterize our classes with type information. But how do we actually parameterize our class? So now we are going to look at the generic version of our print array class. So if we use generics, our print array class would look something like this. So as you can see, after the class name, I've passed a parameter in angle brackets. So this is called as a formal type parameter. And inside the class body, wherever we have type information, I've specified this formal type parameter. So now this class is not bound to any one particular data type. It is generic, right? Now, uh, again, it's not just alphabet T over here. You can use any alphabet which you want, but there are some conventions which are good to follow and we'll look at them in the subsequent tutorials. So this is our formal type parameter. And again, uh, you can use multiple formal type parameters over here separated by comma. But for simplicity, I've just used a single parameter, right? So guys, this is our generic print array class. Now, while creating an object of this class, we have to pass the actual type information. For example, if we want to print an integer array, then we have to create the object like this. Okay, so as you can see, we have passed the type information over here, which is integer while creating this object. Okay, and one more point is that uh, you cannot use primitive type over here. So you cannot uh, pass primitive int in these angle brackets. Okay, it has to be a class or an interface. Right. And after creating the object, you can just call the print method and pass some integer array to it. Right. So this uh, just assume that this is some integer array which you are passing. Right. So this will print all the data from this integer array. Now, similarly, if you want to print a string array, then you have to create the object like this. Right. Again, as you can see, we have passed the, uh, the, the type information, which is string in this case. And then we can just call the print method and pass some string array to it. So both these statements will work perfectly fine, right? So this is how our generic print array class would work. And in both these cases, you will not get any compile time error because in this case, the compiler will consider this class as if there is integer in place of T. Whereas in this case, the compiler will consider this class as if there is string in place of T. So it's perfectly fine. So this is our generic print array class. So you write the class once and it can be used with different types of data. And that is the benefit which we get by using generics. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you for watching and see you in my next tutorial. I hope you like this video. If you are into Java or web development, do subscribe to my channel. The link will be in the description below. I will be uploading a lot of more content over there. Thank you for watching.